My name's Warren Smith. This is our team, Charlie Rath from Verbier. Um, we're here at the show because we're the technique editors for the Telegraph. So we do a lot of uh, writing, research, and things that go on with the development of ski technique. What the, the idea of the talk today, I'm not sure if everyone can see this, but there's a few things that we use when we run a, a ski course, not just for the regular uh, recreational courses, which is what most of you would fit into, but also with instructors and athletes, so people that we're training who are at a performance level. And the idea is we, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, we came up with a formula, a triangular formula, which was ski physiology, ski biomechanics, ski technique, and a combination of all three, and trying to use them at a commercial level. It's quite different if you're in a national team and you're training and you're working towards your own cup and world cup. You've usually got the facilities of having physios and people around you that allow you to achieve this. The idea about biomechanics and physiology is that when you have an area in your skiing that you're trying to work on, usually there's a block. So you can be told what to do, and that happens quite a lot. But you're feeling sometimes that on one side you might get it, but turning the other direction is blocked, and it's usually down to a physiological issue. Um, some of the tests we're going to go through with you today, there's three main points, but the tests are quite prolific. So if you go through a range test, for example, it will leave you thinking you will actually need to go and do something with your physiology, your stretching. It's not um, rocket science, you don't have to go and see a physio, but you just have to take a bit more awareness of it once we've explained these points. Um, the three points we work on, point number one is correct ski legs flex pattern. Okay, so a lot of skiers that ski with us uh, don't always dominate their ski boots. And no matter what we try to teach them over a five day course, it's a little bit, if we're honest, a bit like throwing your money away, because the reality of it is if this area isn't functioning and working mechanically correct, it doesn't matter what we try and teach them, they're never going to absorb it. And it would also be like, if they achieve something, building a, a house with a weak foundation. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two is ski asymmetry. I think a lot of you here would have heard of the word A-frame and being asymmetric, not symmetrical. We obviously want you to ski symmetrically. Um, we look at this because it does involve ski physiology and it does involve biomechanics. The, the physiological side is muscles that you need to switch on to, to keep symmetry in the legs, your adductors and your glutes. And the, the actual biomechanical side is ski boots. So the relationship between you and the ski is governed by how you're set up in the boot. So quite often for that, you've got footbeds and you've got your canting adjustment in the upper cuff of your boot. The, the increased leg steering range, um, this is very important because it, when you try and teach the sport to someone, or when you guys go away this winter, and you know the difference from a blue run to a red run to a black run, what it all feels like on the body, and you know the requirements of trying to grip and maintain an edge, the outcome usually changes for most recreational skiers when you're going from red to black. You're not as efficient, and if you move into that off-piste environment, all three of these things, when you're submerged in powder, which is a bit like the acid test for technique, there's no frequency to be able to slip your ski sideways to recover, which a lot of people do every turn on piece. So, you know, to find that perfect technique, we need to cover these areas. We're going to talk about the first one, the correct leg flex pattern. So, if I play this video through, what I want to show you, this is just a couple of clips off of our, our DVDs. The boot there, you can see the mechanism working and how it flex correctly. The reason we're showing you this particular skier, he's a guy that comes out and skis with us quite regular. When, you, when we watched him ski, we looked at this, this posture, the first thing we thought in our heads was to go down and think, actually this guy's probably got a pair of ski boots that are too stiff for him, he can't flex his boots. Okay, so he learned, before he came to see us, he learned all of his progression in skiing. So this is what's quite scary about it, all of it not using his ankle joint. So you can only imagine the amount of knee flex this guy picks up because he can't bend his ankle. Puts his body weight quite far back and it also you know, not only reduces performance but it massively increases the risk of injury just because he's in a vulnerable position of a backwards twisted fall and his ACL getting stretched or, or broke. When we took him outside of his ski boots, we were thinking, okay, we've got to try and soften up his ski boots, but, but the closer the look got, his flex pattern on his boot was 90. And we're thinking, actually, that boot is soft enough to flex. When we look closer, we did a thing which we call a drop test. And in skiing terms, just if you watch um, Charlie up against the wall here, 
Um, if Rav was to measure Charlie from his hip, we've got a ruler down there, so he's going to actually take a ruler and try and make the measurement from the top of the hip. If you want to dominate your ski boots, and if you want to be able to flex correctly, you need to clear around 20 centimetres in a drop test. Very important point. What's Charlie got to, Rav? 22, 23 centimeters. That's what it looked like to me. Roughly 23 centimeters. So Charlie, no matter what boot we put him in, he's usually going to be able to dominate his ski boot because we know that the angle of his leg is going to reach the boot's maximum flex capacity. However, a lot of skiers don't. Now some guys like this that we tested, this guy in particular, when we did the drop test, he got to six. And when he got to six, that was it, it was locked. So from his point of view, it doesn't matter what kit we're gonna put him in, he's not gonna do the sport correctly because the lower limb, the joint that flexes at the base is the one that's really crucial for making everything else be stacked up in balance. So because he couldn't bend it, his whole sport's been learning correctly. And unfortunately, a lot of skiers that come out to ski with us, this actually is the case. You know, there's a lot of people never finding their true center balance point. Um, this test is quite interesting. Those of you that are not sure, or may feel that you've got uh, tight calves, or you, you may have already experienced boot flex issues, we would like to try and test some people here to go and do the drop test. Particularly if someone thinks they're tight in the calves. Okay, so put your hand up if you think you might be. Do you want to come out and have a go? Um, and anyone who thinks they've got quite a big range of flex in their calf, for people that stretch regularly, anyone in the audience do a fair amount of sport? Flexible, yeah? You two come over, let's have a quick go. Just going to measure, because part of this talk is to give a little bit of an awareness to you, but also to let you take away with you the idea that this stuff is everything you can do at home. It's not about joining a gym, it's not about being rocket science, it's a very basic test. So if you look at Charlie over here, Charlie's got his ruler up against the wall, and as this lady drops, let's have a look. What's he getting to, Charlie? 23, it's good, you're not that tight in the calves. Okay, let's have a look at yours. Charlie, do you want to measure here, see where we're getting to? So let's go back up straight, and centimeters, where you go? And drop. Okay, yeah. There's a bit of a stop. This is interesting. If you do that again, does one of your heels come off the ground first? Okay, which one? All right, okay. So taking it a stage further, and this is why you know the, the physiological biomechanical aspect really counts. One of our heels came off the ground first, okay? Now the basic side of it is if you watch Charlie up against the wall, he's just going to show you a couple of basic calf stretches. So as you watch it, you can really easily balance this out, but quite often people don't get the use of stretching their calves. So Charlie's doing a lower, lower, lower uh, calf stretch and there's also a straight leg one you can do to, to work the back of it. But boot flex is a very important factor in trying to make sure that you're set up correctly, okay? Then just watch this guy coming down. You can see as he comes around and turn, straight away he's in the back seat. Um, this guy changed, it took him about three weeks and as he went through it, he got the use of flexing in his ankle. Um, we'll move on to the second stage, but just looking at this, we're talking about these parts here as well, making sure it's flexing around the hinge. And you can see the boot gets a lot of work there. Always worth a check, always worth going into a ski shop to make sure your boots do flex correctly. Once you've got it right, there's things you can do at home. You know, you can jump, put one ski boot on, work on flexing your ski boots before you go away. Um, going to move on to the next stage, ski asymmetry. Um, just a shot here, trying to show you some footage of hips, knees and feet the same distance apart. So it's just a shot um, of us skiing in powder, going through the powder turn. Skis are matching at the same angle and that's quite often a lot of the problem with skiers trying to go off piste and trying to ski powder where the symmetry is out. Okay? On the symmetry side of things, you can, most of the skiers that come and ski with us aren't symmetrical. You know, usually most skiers are in lane frame. This is a guy that skis on black runs, um, does some heli skiing with us, he skis with an A-frame and like many skiers, his knees are dropping closer together than his hips and his feet maybe. As he comes around a turn, you can even see from this picture that the ski edges aren't matching. Now if you took that skier and, and did the acid test, dropped him into powder, 
his skis are definitely going to go in different directions. Has anyone here ski power? Just put your hand up so I know who we're dealing with more, more experienced skiers. Okay, so a few of you. You know what the feeling's like when you're trying to fight the turn and then it's not flowing, it's start, stop, and the skis move slightly differently. This is just one aspect of it. I'm going to show you this other guy coming down. Very similar sort of thing. He's a little bit more um, technical, a lot more rhythm, but what he has is a lack of lateral control. This time it's not his knees dropping in, it's his feet splitting wider apart, which is a similar type of thing. Causes the same issue, it's in the A-frame. And what we're going to try and show you is this 10 second test where we pull the feet slowly towards each other. Charlie's just going to demonstrate it here. So Charlie's on this pad, there's a little bit of, um, a little bit of friction but not too much. And as he goes through, he's slowly pulling his feet towards each other. And we've got different um, sheets here. There's a much slipperier surface to, to work on. The one Charlie's working on has got a bit of friction. As he goes through it, just slowly, the legs start to shake. Can you see that? Now, the reason they shake is because it's a, a muscle range that you don't often use. You, you very rarely are required to work your symmetry in actually most other sports. But in skiing, because your, your, your symmetry is so important to your technique, this is something that we need to think about. Um, we'd like people to come out and have a look at this because this is the physiological side. The biomechanical side is your ski boot. And that's where you go to the shop, you get your wedges put in, you get your footbeds made correctly, and you get your canting adjusted. But we need a few people to come up and try this. We'll give you a bit of a hand, um, but it's a 10 second test. The reason we want a few people to come up is because we want to get your feedback on what it feels like to do that slowly. Just put your hand up, you're gonna come and give this a go. You wanna come out? Well done. And yourself, over and come. Yeah, come over as well. A few people here to go and practice, four people, that's brilliant. So we're going to put them on the mats and let's have a, a look. Now, if it's a little bit difficult for you guys, what we can do is we can put the, uh, the stress out there. We can take the strain away from your hands. Okay, so we'll take your body weight through. Charlie will work with you on that. Jordan will work with you on the other side. And just very slowly putting the feet towards each other. So as this lady pulls in sideways, you can see, that's really good actually, really, really good. Have another go, come out wider. How's that feeling? And can you feel this in the legs where it's starting to shake? Yeah. So for both of these guys, do you guys want to come over, swap, have another go with the next two on there. When you try this, and this is why this is quite an important chat for you guys as skiers, this isn't used very much, but if you actually practice this twice a week, three times a week, five or ten minutes, what you'd find is you'd be switching on really key muscle groups to try and help you with your technique. And to be honest with you, we're not really preaching technique here because all of you guys will ski with different coaches, you've all got your ways you learn to ski, but at the end of the day you'll get there. You can all make turns down... Is this us? You can all make turns down slopes where you achieve and you have fun out on the holiday. But for this, this is different. This is where you personally can change the way you ski and the way you hold your symmetry. So 10 second test. Now this one, again, it's on, um, on the tutorial side of our website. You'll find it under the biomechanics range test. And that's something that everyone should be thinking about at home because if you get it, you'll start to work out your symmetry and avoid what we were watching there. Um, the third point we're gonna work on, guys, is about leg steering and ski steering. A lot of skiers, when they go through their turns, and just let this come up, on here you can see the increased leg steering range. There's a little bit of a demo to show you here. As we're making our turns down the face, this is, um, this is quite interesting. If we took you guys as skiers, making your curved turns on piece having an open space, if we put you into a narrow corridor, a steep narrow corridor, something where your speed was reduced, and the turn rate was increased, you'd probably find it technically more difficult, okay? That's usually what happens. We call it the short game, a bit like putting in golf. The short game in skiing is usually where people's technique suffers. So we put you at the top of a mobile field, quite steep, you're gonna be different balanced than you would do carving on an open piece. Same as in a narrow couloir. Um, what's, one of the big reasons for it is how you steer your skis. And the slower you go, the more difficult it is to steer the ski, because it, technically speaking, it's heavier. Okay. As you watch these turns we're making down here, you can see that when we're turning left to right, just taking it through frame by frame, the legs are making a steer, a steered movement right the way across the fall line. 
and without any hip rotation. So the hips are facing down the foreline. As we come around the next turn, you'll see the same thing. But what we want you to watch is this is a recreational skier, intermediate, perhaps advanced intermediate. As he makes his turn down the hill, you can see when he turns left how his whole hip has followed him around. And as he comes around to his next turn, to the right, you can see the zip of his jacket facing down the hill. They're not really big turns, they're pretty much in the full line. Next turn comes here, and that's the turn where his right leg, when we did a range test, he could only steer this right leg 30 degrees around. So if you think about it, if that leg itself can only steer 30 degrees, the other 60 degrees is going to be with hip rotation, if he ever needed to put out that turn. Now you guys, I think some of you would have felt this when you've gone from the comfortable to the uncomfortable, where it's got a lot steeper and you know you've got to gain control. And that's where this is going to affect his skiing directly. Okay? As he goes around his confident turn, you can see straight away that he's a much better angle, it's natural for him, he isn't having to rotate his hips. Hip rotation's got two things. One of them is that when you rotate your hips, you throw your body weight on your inside ski. Okay, when the body weight goes on the inside ski, you've messed up the physics equation. You've then got to start to do recovery turns, which a lot of people do spend their time doing. The second thing is, when you rotate your hip, you flatten your skis. You're rotating your hip, you're standing more on top of the downhill ski, and it flattens it, and obviously, you're looking for a platform to get a grip off. So, this is something that's quite interesting. We're going to go through these tests now. The guys we've done um, on this test at the Manchester show, have ranged between people that have only got 10 degrees of steering on one leg and have gone to the other side and have worked towards 40, 50. Charlie here is obviously doing this every day. This is something that he's, you know, he's doing it for a living. So his range of steering without moving his hip. Actually, come forward at the back, guys. If you can't see, feel free to come around at the sides. It's a much easier view. We've mapped out on here that zero degrees to 90 degrees. And to get this straight, if you just watch Charlie doing it again, to ski technically correct without any issues or any corrective things you need to work on, you need to make sure your legs have got 70 degrees each way. In an ideal world, we'd love you to have 90 degrees. But just to get through towards black run status without having hip rotation, Charlie here is getting to 90 degrees. Now, we'll do this test with a few of you, and those of you that we don't have time to do it with, you can always come over to our stand and we'll do it for you after. But the tests were quite prolific, and as I said earlier at the start, a lot of people had imbalances between left and right. Does anyone here know that they've got a weaker turn direction? Just put your hand up. Okay, it's quite a lot of you, the audience. So, who wants to go and do this range test? Just a couple of you come out. You come out from the front, and yourself, over here. So standing on here, and those of you again who can't see from the sides, just come in from the side, you can come and have a look at this. So Charlie's gonna hold this guy's hips, now I'm looking at his looking at his right leg. So this is for his left turn. He's got 40 degrees. Okay, that's where it's locked. Let's see it going the other way. So now we're looking at how far his left leg goes across. It's about 40 degrees, 45 degrees almost. Now that's pretty normal, believe it or not. A lot of people could come out here as well and get the full range, but that's pretty normal. Um, what are you getting there, Raf? Around 45. Okay, so 45 with this guy going on his right turn. Let's have a look towards his left. So, going to be watching his right foot go around towards the left. So, there is the same sort of thing, 45 degrees. What have we got here, Charlie? Okay, does anyone here think they're quite flexible? Because it would be nice to get someone that can go, you're flexible. Over you come. Anybody else got a good flexibility? Because we want to try and get someone get a little bit further than 45 degrees. So if I, if I hold your hips here, so it's step towards the right. That's about 45, 50 degrees, and then step in towards the left. That's a block there. So that's nearly. 10 to 20 degrees, that's going to have, as we say, a prolific effect on the technique. So if we took that to the top of a steep face, yeah. I know that's going to be the one turn, you're like, you're, yeah. you're, and your brain will already work out that the body can't... Always, always pushing it along, well that ski is always going out and skiing to the back of the hill. Compensate to get out of that, because I can't quite... That, that has to be fixed, and the relatively is that a few weeks of work with stretches, I mean one of the stretches is like... 